engineering study of the oil dock. Um, and they spent a few months um, doing their investigation and, and analysis of the facility. Um, Ocean and Coastal was also hired by EDC. Um, as you know, EDC established the East River Ferry Service. Um, so in order for REAC to be in a position to um, be a participant in that ferry service, we asked Ocean and Coastal to take a look at our oil dock and what is needed to um, bring that facility up to a point where we can have ferry service here on Roosevelt Island as well as possibly some other um, facilities. Um, so what Matt is going to do is um, walk us through briefly in terms of what their findings were as part of their study, their recommendations and some concept conceptual um, renderings of a potential facility for, for the oil dock. And then we'll open it up for questions and answers. Except for the stop work. Yeah, it's just um, a few more minutes. Um, but the, the, the object of the study uh, was to see if the oil dock could in any way be used or suitable or that would be a location for a potential ferry dock here? Yes, absolutely. Um, we're an island, but we're an island that doesn't have a facility for um, a boat to... to Does everybody know where the oil dock is? The oil, um, I apologize for that. The oil dock is located on the east channel of the East River. Oh, right it's, it's, it's right underneath um, the footing of the uh, Queensboro Bridge, on the Queen side of the Queensboro Bridge. It's gated off right now, and we're going to keep it gated off. As you'll see from the study, it's um, in, in very poor condition. Um, uh, it's, it's directly across from, from the steam plant, if, if folks are familiar with the steam plant location. Now there were other facilities that were considered um, on the West Channel, over by the Octagon Building and also by the um, by the subway station, but the the U.S. Coast Guard um, prohibit any type of um, facilities or a ferry service on that side of um, of the East River. Oh, so, okay. Why did they do that? Do you know? UN. Well, not just the UN, but apparently the currents are much stronger there. Um, then it is on the Why east. is Water's Edge allowed to have their own I'm sorry? Why can Water's Edge do their own? No, but that's on the East Channel. Is it? Yes. Well, Matt, can you yeah, speak to that for a few minutes while I'm loading up the program? Uh, I'm sorry, what was that? I didn't hear the question. Um, the question, I, I, break, I basically answered the question, but you can provide more of the technical background on it as, as to why the West Channel uh, of the of the East River is not allowed for ferry service as opposed to the East Channel, where we're proposing our, um, um, our ferry service by the U.S. Coast Guard. You know, I, I would say it's probably because it's the more highly used uh, channel as far as commercial traffic goes. Um, you know, it, it's it's a small passage uh, in comparison to the rest of the East River and, and most of the commercial traffic is going up and down that side. Okay. So I think that they would prefer to limit the um, ferry traffic. You th wait, you think that they that it might be related to commercial traffic. Has the Coast Guard issued any formal ruling as far as the delivery of, of traffic on that? Is, is there any paper from the Coast Guard prohibiting traffic on that side? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay, then it's settled. Unless someone can give us a ruling that says that the West Channel cannot be used, we're allowed to do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that there isn't one that exists. I'm saying that uh, you know I, I was not aware if there was. Have you one. made a FOIA request to the Coast Guard requesting the status of ferry service on the West Channel? Uh, as no, the, no, no, we have not. No, their study was only in, in relation to the um, to the oil dock. They didn't. Um, look into um, the, the West Channel. Um, but in my discussions with EDC, when Bruce Becker was considering um, uh, the oil dock on the West, West Channel, that was one of the limiting factors in terms of getting um, Coast Guard to okay. issue well, again, the permits. Do we, do we have any official ruling from them in letter or otherwise that says that the I don't have any that. Okay. Right. Unless we, we get remember. that. That years ago, when we had that dock, when we had that trial uh, ferry, uh, it was also it was at that particular dock that it was okay for. So it must be a reason. That's what I'm saying. So if, if there's no ruling, a letter that says that we're not allowed to do it, why isn't it, why isn't it being reviewed as an option? You take it off the table, and then you said, "Well, what's the reason?" 
he said, well, he thinks maybe it's because of cornstarch. No, there's, there's no ruling that says we can't do it. But I don't think point. we asked, they asked, wasn't it the EDC wanted this particular When the, the uh, but the Upper East Side, they're talking about putting a ferry dock up on the Upper East Side, which is the same current, same channel, same issues. Mm -hmm. So. Um, up in the 70s? Yeah, there was, there was that whole meeting there's, there's in the whole, 70s. There's a whole plan, there's a whole waterfront plan right. to put ferry service up on the Upper East Side and a few other places down there. 77? 79, maybe? Something like that. Somewhere so in the Upper 70s. That was another service. This was the well, hospital before. Right. No, there's, 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 there's a ferry service um, over by 69. Uh, something street, like 97th so, Street and so right. on. So we can't, so if it comes down to the problem where they're saying, if, if either the, the ferry dock by the Octagon or the ferry dock by the oil barge, mm -hmm. if it's a problem for us, it's, if, you know, because of some technical reason in terms of the the, the cost of building a, a safe dock in, in there because of the, the foundations that they put down, or if it's a floating barge of some kind, that's one factor. But just saying it's because the Coast Guard won't let us, so far that's not true. You have, you have nothing empirically writing to this that we can't do it. Maybe true. This is discussions that I've had with EDC. I don't have anything writing right now to present with you, so okay. what I'll do, I'll follow up with you. So far yeah. okay. as um, you've been able to find, yeah. but uh, 1984 is what now, 37, 27 years of documentation? And a lot of it's in storage, And but we've been talking about ferries for that long. Mm -hmm. There may be some old ruling that nobody here knows about. The other thing, too, in terms of um, at least for the east side ferry service, um, the the stops right now are on the Brooklyn side and the Queens side. So if we want to piggyback off of that service, it makes sense for it to be on the oil dock as opposed to looping around Roosevelt mm -hmm. Island and, and incurring more so travel place. time. No, but the question, but the issue is, if there's going to be an east side one on the 70s, then we can we can, they can stop on the way down the southern right. version. But it, it would be multiple. For, Ferry service because when, when we met with the operator, um, Billy Bay, um, maybe six months ago, um, four months ago, um, and I don't have the the map of of that ferry service that's that's a trial for all intents and purposes for the next three years. Um, they're hitting two points in Williamsburg and going also on the southern tip of Brooklyn to Red Hook. Uh, and then on the weekends or during the summer months, they're going to hit Governor's Island and some other locations. So in order for, for it to not be too much of a burden or add additional travel time, it makes sense to look at the oil dock because it's, it's only a few minutes away from Queens West. Do they stop at Queens West or Queens Beach or where? Um, I think there's a stop at, at Queens West, um, so, but they're not going any further than that. Um, so in order for in order for us to advocate a uh, well, position, no, no, we want to minimize no. the operating okay, time okay. of the travel time okay, for the ferry service. The question, service. though, is if there's going to be water taxi service in the east side, of, on the west side mm -hmm. of the channel, because it's servicing the upper east side, heading down past Roosevelt Island, down to Wall Street, that Manhattan one can stop on the west side, on the west side of the island, island. Mm -hmm. just as easy as the Queens one passing on, on the other side of the island can stop at the oil dock. Right, that makes sense. Okay, so the, so the question is, if you if, if you guys came out and said, oh, we're going to talk to the Queens operator and say, we want you to stop at the dock island, they're saying, no, we're going to have to loop around. And if you talk to the guy on the east side, they said, oh, right. we want you to stop at the oil dock side, they're going to say, no, because they're going to have to loop around. But if they're doing a water taxi there, they can stop on the west side. And if they're, and if they're stopping over here, they can stop on right. the east side. You, you make absolute, you're 100% correct. If, okay. if there's, a, let's say, a Bronx service and a, um, a ferry service and it's hitting the Upper East Side and it hits the east side of World, or west side of Roosevelt Island, then then fine, you're right. Having a, a, a ferry stop over by the subway station makes sense. But from what I recall, and I don't have the documentation in front of me, um, e when EDC came out here to take a look at also Bruce Brecker's, Brecker's um, um, landing location, as well as the one at the subway station, we were told that it would be very difficult for the Coast Guard to issue a permit for for the West Channel. Well, that'll work. We'll, get, we'll, we'll, but we'll, we'll investigate. We'll get a look into it. Okay. We were requested by, I think... You keep interrupting board members, Steve. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to tell you, I have you started. started. I have started. <laughs> it started. Okay. Uh, I was just going to say, uh, that none of this is relevant right now. We asked them, we asked this outfit, 
to look at the oil dock for whatever reason, we have to have to look at the oil dock, and that's what today's report is about. You're right. Okay. If we need to get renegotiate, if we need to renegotiate or get more information or better information or make e EDT, he has a hard copy. Of it. Tell us why they insisted it be there. Well, that's a discussion between us and EDT. It's not for I think not for Nando's. Uh, Fernando, you have that hard copy. Isn't that the uh, review item for? Uh, yeah. You know, I'm tempted to cancel this and try to reboot. Well, oh, Fernando, so, you, have that, yeah. you have a hard copy, right? So you have Michael, a hard copy. So just I mean, Michael, why, why Octagon? This from you? Low I mean, tech paper? No, no, no. Not, 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 and I'm challenging that assertion that the Coast Guard won't let us stop on the West Side because no one has produced any piece of documentation that the Coast Guard has said no. Okay, now let's say that, that it can be done at the Octagon. Then we still have a problem. Well, no, the Octagon is the issue. The issue is East Channel or just West Channel. Yes. So if there's a service that's running from, you know, the Upper East Side of Manhattan all, wherever, all the way down to Wall Street, then they can just as easily stop on Rhode Island. But where? They're talking about the Octagon. No, either. Where we have one dock facility at the Octagon, we also could potentially have a dock facility by, by the subway. The one by the subways and is already our transportation hub would probably be preferable. Yeah. But then I bet most of the people would be wanting to go upriver to somewhere. No, there's no most people most people who would be too, who would be able to afford and use the subway the, the show, water shuttle service would be going either to Midtown mm -hmm. or, or they would be going down to Wall Street area. Matt, if you just start walking through, because I think yeah. it's coming up right now. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. The pictures are, are, are valid. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, there we go. All right, so I'm on the first page, just the title page. Um, again, like Fernando was saying, this presentation summarizes uh, the findings that we had from our uh, Federal Landing Concept Study. Um, again, my name is Matthew Teeden, I was the project engineer for this project. Uh, Stephen Samuel was the project manager. Uh, unfortunately, couldn't be here today. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so, a quick outline of the presentation. Um, I can go through a, a quick introduction just to identify the, uh, the main goals and the timeline and the different tasks for the project. Uh, and then I will review some uh, particular uh, items for uh, coal dock specifically, uh, describe the structure, talk about the findings that we saw from our inspection. Um, and then I can discuss the recommendations that we have for uh, facility upgrades that would be required for a uh, fair thing. Uh, the next slide. Uh, introduction. Um, so just as an introduction again, this has been discussed, the primary goal here was to assess the potential for this uh, facility as a ferry landing concept, um, as opposed to just do a, um, a condition assessment that was included, but it was, it was more than just that. Uh, next slide. Uh, the different tasks that we had, um, you know, we reviewed the different site uh, drawings that we had available and, and mobilized the site. We performed a, a one-day level of effort uh, above water and underwater inspection. Um, using this information, uh, we did a, a structural analysis on the structure based on its uh, conditions that we found. Uh, we took all of this uh, and, and prepared a report along with our recommendations. Uh, for the different concepts for providing uh, a fair landing concept here. Uh, next slide. Uh, we received a notice for Steve June 6th and did the inspection on June 16th. Uh, Steve Samuel and myself uh, presented this to uh, Fernando on June 29th and submitted the follow-up report on the 11th of uh, July. Uh, and then that brings us today, uh, the 29th. Um, so now on to the structure description. Uh, this is just an aerial shot of the uh, coal dock. Um, again, it's on the east side of the island, just below the Queensboro Bridge. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, based on the available drawings, it was constructed about 1937. Um, it's supported by steel H-piles that are anchored into the bedrock. 
bedrock in this particular location is very shallow. Uh, these H piles were also encased in a protective steel pipe pile, and then the annulus between the H piles and the pipe pile uh, was filled with concrete. Hold on one second, please, man. Sure. I just want to read all those words again. So we're in the bedrock there, which is pretty hard rock, as I recall. Concrete encased steel beams with timber framing. Oh, yeah. Those low water guys, check. Cast in place. What's going on? It's pretty standard. I built the Pier 76. There's exactly the same kind of construction. Right, and if you, uh, if you want to go to the next slide, it shows a, a cross section, a typical cross section through the pier, uh, through the dock, looking south. Um, so you can see it's a, a cast in place concrete deck supported by the steel H piles, which are themselves uh, encased in the, the protected steel and concrete. This is the slope. Um, yeah. It also has uh, longitudinal beams uh, that are uh, yeah. steel wide flange beams that are cast uh, monolithically with the concrete deck. Um, and then there's uh, transverse uh, timber framing. Yeah, that's uh, that one at both the, the low water elevation and the mean high water elevation just for additional okay. distance. Matt, do you have a note as to what the nature of that rock is? Is it there? Uh, I just can't see it. I, I I do not know offhand. Okay. Are you going to cover the cur the current erosion conditions of both the, the footings and the, uh, the yeah? Beams? I, I'll get to the conditions that's okay. coming up next. Um, and also inshore of, of this structure, there's there's a seawall that's um, consists that's right. of uh, that's that rectangle on the right. Steel sheet piles uh, okay. with um, concrete backfill. Okay. Uh, and that retains the upland earth. That interlocking uh, structure, where one is keyed, where the higher something is keyed into a lower something, is yeah, that the is that the, the seawall or something that's else? That's the inshore seawall, correct. Okay. Okay. Um, they they keyed it in um, in two locations. They they doweled it into the bedrock. I see the bedrock that. is so shallow here. Okay. Um, and then they, they pour the top half of it monolithically with the concrete deck. What the erosion rate is, that's a shallow seat footing. That, the middle one's a deep footing. The yeah. top one's a shallow footing, so they can slip over time. That makes sense. Okay. Next slide. Okay, uh, next slide. I'll, I'll go through some of the uh, observed conditions that we found during our inspection. Uh, yeah, Start pile. Um, in general, all of the steel shells, these are the protective uh, shells that we found, have uh, heavy corrosion. Yeah. Um, in almost every case, the, the steel was corroded completely through, and the concrete was visible below. Um, now, the primary load-bearing elements here are those steel H piles, which are uh, encased well within this concrete. Um, at no location did we see the uh, steel H piles, and because of that, we can only assume that it has good full section. And therefore, the uh, piles were found to uh, likely have their as-built capacity. There's no uh, Load reduction based on okay. the power conditions. Matt, do we understand from the upper picture that there might have been, that there's wave action underneath the deck? Uh, there is wave action uh, under the deck. Um, I would assume the high uh, at high tide the water comes up fairly high, uh -huh. um, and you know with just general surge and wakes, right. uh, you know it's likely that that the under deck gets gets splashed significantly. And I'll, I'll get to that in a second when when we show the condition of the under deck. Sorry. Um, so the next slide, uh, the framing. Uh, again, again, these are the um, steel wide flange members that were encased in concrete. Uh, in general, the, the bottom protective concrete cover has been eroded and spalled off. Um, if you see the top picture on the right here, uh, you can see the bottom flange of that steel member, and, it, and it's got a good amount of corrosion. Um, That's this. However, again, with, uh, based on our um, structural analysis, we don't anticipate that this um, has caused any uh, loss of capacity um, from its as built condition. Matt, is this a kind of a standard amount of concrete loss that you would expect from something that was poured in 1937, or is this excessive, or is it actually in pretty good shape? Um, you know, 1937 has been around a long time. Is this pretty much expected for the limited amount of rehab that I'm assuming has taken place here? None. <laughs> um, and, and the, the transverse timber framing uh, was essentially failed or, or not e existed. And the bottom picture here shows uh, a framing member that was in place with uh, heavy rod damage 
Um, but, but what we found from our analysis was that the structure itself being um, as rigid and robust as it is, that these timber framings weren't necessarily um, needed for the lateral stiffness. Um, well, so well, isn't, that stuff on, isn't that stuff considered sacrificial anyway, eventually? Uh, the timber? Yeah. Um, not necessarily sacrificial, but it, it certainly has a, a much smaller surface life than the, the other elements. Thank you. Next uh, slide. So the the uh, structural analysis revealed that overall the framing wasn't really governing the load carrying capacity. Okay. Um, now if we move to the next slide, please. Uh, the concrete deck. Uh, this was in, in rough shape, exposed. and this is where I was saying, you know, you likely see some some splash on the underside of the deck. Um, well, rebar is exposed there. Yeah, there's there's yep. a large uh, portion of it is open spalled with exposed rebar, and you can see from this top, top picture here, uh, a lot of the rebar is essentially failed and missing. Um, did you see any any uh, through platform cracking? Uh, we did not. No. Um, in fact, actually, the top deck uh, doesn't doesn't look all that bad. Just minor uh, scaling and surface wear and erosion. Uh, but based on the condition of this under deck, uh, you know the deck itself has essentially failed. It's it's beyond the point where it can be efficiently repaired uh, with this many exposed and failed rebars. Um, because of this, you can't really um, count on it for having any sort of capacity. Um, so this was obviously the the governing factor in the load carrying capacity of the overall uh, pier, and. Uh, during our, our initial presentation, we were at, you know we told Fernando not to be. We we can't say that there that it's good enough to have any sort of loading. I mean, it would probably be okay for just pedestrian loading, um, but you know we don't have the structural uh, analysis to back that up. So certainly no, you you can't open it for any live load rating. Is what I'm trying to say. Right, makes sense. Just a quick note uh, to all concerned. When eventually we get around to pulling this thing apart, and if we get to the point where uh, that davit there, that, that thing that you tie boats up to, goes to the historical site, we would love to have it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. well, are there, are there any, um, if, we, if we have to uh, demolish the top deck, are there any EPA concerns? I know it's got the final EPA report to do the construction over the river. But did you observe any asbestos or other materials that would be put us on a hazardous material list as far as stripping that out? Um, you know, we, we didn't consider that. I, I, I know that uh, you know I know that structures of these age are, are certainly demolished quite a bit around the harbor um, without any sort of uh, you know EPA concerns. Um, you know, they, they, what they would do is set up some some containment structure so that. Uh, you know, anything that falls in the into the river could be easily retrieved. Well, when they, for example, when they did the 59 or the Queensboro Bridge or 59, whatever they're calling it now, Koch Bridge, Koch Bridge, right, Koch Bridge, um, they had to encase the whole bridge because of lead paint and asbestos. Right. So uh, since this was constructed in '39, there's potential asbestos, but I don't know if you observed anything in the construction when you when you surveyed it. You know, we we didn't specifically observe anything that would look like any sort of smoking gun or or Away. Okay, so it's probably just concrete dust and standard demolition for concrete and rebar. Yeah, exactly. EPA okay. still has to sign yeah, off on that. Yeah, they still have to sign off on it. What is that kind of inspection that gets done? Yeah. Environmental? Environmental review. Yeah. yeah, okay. Just keeping stuff in mind that adds time and cost. Okay. okay. Next slide. Okay, next slide. Uh, the seawall. Um, again, there, there are stay in place steel sheet piles on the outside face of it. Um, however, these don't provide the primary structural um, capacity for the seawall. It's basically a concrete gravity structure where the, the weight of the concrete um, is what holds the earth fill back. So we did see uh, some significant corrosion damage and loss of uh, section for these steel sheet piles, uh, particularly down near the mud line. Yeah. Um, however, you know that's not the since it's not the primary means of uh, supporting the upland. It's not a uh, you know, it's nothing too critical, and in general, the seawall still primarily sounds. Your your primary di your, your earlier diagram showed that the middle pylons were were uh, deep drilled, not not really deep drilled, but deeper than the than the uh, seawall. 
Did you see any sign indications of slippage at the front footings at the sea at the seawall? We did bulging not, or no. So it still looks like it's intact. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Um, so the next slide. Uh, basically, what we did uh, from this um, inspection was we came up with two recommendations uh, for installing a ferry uh, jump uh In general, we, we agree that it, it's a it's a good site for uh, a ferry landing, uh, but the site as itself needs uh, I wouldn't say significant, but there are definitely uh, upgrades that are needed in order to to bring it up to the minimum standards. Um, our first option uh, is, is basically the, the bare bones minimum that you would need to do uh, in order to get a ferry uh, landing up and running. Um, the second option has a little more uh, extensive upland site rehabilitation uh, that would uh, you know bring sort of like a waterfront park and and, and general landscaping uh, to the area. I mean, is the sea channel intact, or is it is it silted over and? We have to replace the top deck, but is there any any sea channel work we have to do? Um, as far as dredging, you mean? Yeah. Uh, you know, not that I see. These ferries don't draw a whole lot of water, uh, and, and the concept that we came up with, uh, both integrated means of keeping the ferries from from landing up on the shore. And if we did the if that's where the ferry was before, I wouldn't imagine. No, no, but it hasn't been used in a really long time, so the right. silt over. And you know, if we replace the top deck and yeah. the silt and the silt and flow, yeah. it fills up closer to the edge. And you know, the, the the water of the river tends to flush some of it out, but it still builds up because it hasn't been. Well, I don't I don't have a so, sense of how the uh, ferry landing itself, the two slips, attaches to either option. Perhaps when we see that, we get a sense of it. We'll have a better sense of what the uh, silting problem might be. Yeah, if the sea channel is clear. Well, the old New York waterway slips were actually. You stepped off the shore onto a barge, and the uh, boats came in, and the bow of the boat fit a curve in the barge. And they right, and that, that's very similar to the two concepts that we have proposed here. Okay. All right, so should um, I go to that, those slides? slides? Yeah, so the next slide. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Everything's too millimeter. Sorry, one point. Yeah, the basics uh, for this ferry landing, all of the elements uh, would be ADA compliant, which is the local law yeah. um, It would have uh, electrical adjustable offloading ramps so that uh, the vessels can land uh, at different freeboards. Um, Would you explain to people what freeboard means? Uh, freeboard is, is the elevation from the water line uh, to the deck of the boat. Okay. So uh, basically, if you have different freeboards, uh, it would mean that the boat, either different types of vessels would be coming up, to different vessels have different freeboards, it, it, again, the height of the, uh, from the water line to the deck of the boat, um, or, you know, depending on how many passengers are on the boat, um, stuff like that, it could be sitting lower in the water or higher in the water. So the electrical adjustable offloading ramps would allow it to, um, to land at different, uh, you know, depending on the, the freeboard of the boat. Um, the, it will also have uh, lighting and railing fixtures that are, would be required from local law 68. Um, and what we're proposing here is, is a newly constructed barge, similar to what you see for the, the East River Ferry um, barges, um, where it would have a fender rack system uh, on, on the north side and the south side, so the, the ferries would land uh, parallel to the island, as opposed to coming in perpendicular. So you'd be able to come in parallel on the north side or parallel on the south side. Um, and, and we think this is necessary based on the, you know, the heavy currents. Um, you know, you, you'd want the option of coming in. You, you would want to always be landing against the current. Uh, it gives the ferry captain much more control. Um, but again, since I said before, the, the elevation of the bedrock is very shallow in this location, so all of the piles that you would need to secure uh, the barge in place would need to be socketed into bedrock, uh, which does add significant cost. Yeah. Um, if you want to go to the next slide. So like I said, option one was just the minimum standards that are required to meet uh, the ADA compliance with the newly constructed barge. Uh, very minimal upland uh, upgrades um, and, and no rehabilitation to the existing oil dock. We'd essentially be landing, um, you know, we got the new barge which is held in place by spud piles and you would land the gangway upland directly onto the seawall. So you would 
you know, need to de uh, demolish part of the existing oil dock, but you would essentially be bypassing it. You wouldn't be using any of that structure. Define spud piles. Sorry. Define spud piles for the audience, please. And then we're going to get then we're going to get the dolphins. Okay. Uh, spud pile uh, would be the steel piles that are driven and they hold the barge in place. Uh, they, they'd be connected to the barge and they would allow the barge to, to move up and down with the tide as the tide rises and falls. Yeah. Um, but like I said, they would need to be anchored into the bedrock to, mm -hmm. to get the required capacity. Um, and we also included uh, monopile dolphins, which those are also uh, steel pipe piles uh, with a sort of fendering cushion on them. And this would keep, um, they'd be, there'd be uh, three on each side, uh, with each berth, so on the north berth and the south berth. So in this and case... These would also be steel pipe piles that would prevent the ferries from uh, washing up onto the shore or hitting the oil dock. Um, and, and these are pretty much required uh, to assist the, the captain, the ferry boat captain, in landing onto the ferry, uh, onto the barge. So in this particular version, I'm sure we'll see a picture in a minute, the boats own gangway kind of touches, I'll say land, you use the word up, upland, and doesn't actually rest on, or people don't have to walk directly on the uh, oil dock itself. Uh, correct. It, it would bypass it. And, and I apologize, I was anticipating being able to show you our, our 3D models that we have here, yeah. um, which is not working because of our, yeah. our meeting didn't quite work out on that token. Um, so I know, I know Fernando, the, the images of these concepts were provided in the report. I'm not sure if that's available to you at this time. Yeah, I have the report here. So it's not in the PDF? Uh, it's not in the, the PDF of the okay. presentation, though. No. Matt, do you know about what page it was on? We'll take a minute and pass this one around briefly, man, if that's all right with you. Okay, yeah, that's, that's perfectly fine. I apologize again that this didn't work out as I was hoping. Oh, it's a gangway that goes from the upland to the barge without... Correct. If, I see. You know, that, that's the type of barge that I'm trying to explain here, where you, know, you would need to land the ferries directly onto the barge as opposed to... Uh, some sort of fixed structure. And the, spud, and the spud piles are the ones that the barge floats up and down on? Correct. And what are those two up along the uh, existing shoreline, between the barge and the shoreline? Is that more of the same? Yes, those are, those are the, uh, they're called dolphin, uh, breasting dolphins uh, is the term. And like I was saying, that they're steel piles that have uh, some, a fendering cushion on them so that uh, the ferry yeah. can actually use those to rub up against when they're uh, resting, when they're you know coming into the. Uh, so that's a nose. It's a nose-in approach parallel to the island in, into this barge. Correct. Either on the north side or the south side. Oh, I see the ferry comes. Yeah, the ferry, the ferry comes in parallel to the island, nose in, and then this 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 uh, gangway gets pulled out, and on the boat people disembark uh, this way. Yeah. Or if, if we're on the other direction, going this way, the bank on the tide I probably. See. So right. you would always want to be berthing the ferry against the tide. Um, right. you know, the tide yeah. is pretty quick, so you wouldn't want to be coming down. Uh, like, so you know, going we, we always land up wind on aircraft as well. Take off and yeah. land up wind, so they have um, more control. So, but the, the ferries, the ferries, nose in to the <clears throat> north or south end of the barge. Correct. Thank you. Um, and while you guys are looking, I can sort of explain option two, which is uh, sort of the, the more involved upland um, uh, upgrades. Um, option two has the same uh, ferry barge where, you know, it would land up against the same barge uh, with the same uh, breasting dolphins and spud piles holding it in place. However, we've also included um, demolishing the existing concrete deck, which is, you know, again, what we found the deck was in really bad shape. So we would de demolish just the deck, leaving the, uh, the piles, which are in good shape, we would leave those in place. Um, and part of the structure, we would pour a new 
or we wouldn't pour, we would, we would build up a new platform using precast concrete planks um, as, as sort of, uh, you know, just a means of public access to the water. Uh, we can, you know, develop the upland site with some landscaping, some park benches. Um, and also, uh, we've included a, a floating dock for kayak launching and, uh, and other small crafts. Uh, this is something that, based on our preliminary presentation, Fernando had said, is something that uh, I would you know, like to consider. Aside from the construction you're looking at for the floating, for the, uh, floating dock, is there any additional construction upstream and downstream that we would have to do for navigational uh, warnings? Um, you know, I'd, I'd have to check the you know local uh, requirements. Not that I'm aware of. Um, you know, I, I could. We would obviously look into that. Yeah, it's just, just another another gadget and cost sticking a, 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 a navigational warning buoy to keep uh, you know people from slamming into it in the dark of the night or lighting, you know, flashing red warning lights for right. idiots who are drinking and driving their boats up and down the East River and smashing over a dock. Right. Okay. Are there requirements, you don't indicate, will the ferry company have additional requirements for uh, uh, onshore structures like a ticket booth or a waiting room or anything like that? Um, we don't know yet. We haven't okay. talked to in that's that not, level of that's detail with the operator. That's right. not in there. Exactly. It's just the dock. Okay. okay. We're just thinking of stuff that's gonna bite us later. Okay. <laughs> if this is but, out of our reach, then it doesn't make sense to yeah. explore the other. That's what first things first. Well, the, the concept here is that there is money within the city of New York and EDC, um, with capital monies that would help subsidize this. This won't be uh, a fully funded REAC project. We're looking to partner with the city uh, to get some capital funds to, to do this. They've done it for other parts of... Do you know how much? Are you talking a million? Yeah, four million? A million um, I've heard as much as there's money out there, as much as two or three million dollars. Um, Ocean and Coastal participated in the reconstruction of the Williamsburg um, dock. Uh, Matt, did you do both facilities, the Schaefer Landing and the other one in Williamsburg? Um, you know, I, I, me personally, was, I wasn't involved with that. I know for a fact that we did the Williamsburg. Right. Um, I, I don't believe that we did the Schaefer Landing. Okay. But there's, there's city capital funds as, as part of this whole effort to do ferry service and, and make the waterways as part of another transportation one mode. Of Project. Exactly. So we would piggyback off of some of those, so those funds. We'll see after Tuesday. Yeah, are any most of those funds though going to the to the places that are in the plan, the city plan, to put um, the docks like the 79th Street spots and the ones that they've already identified? Um, possibly, but that again, that's why we wanted to do the study. So we wanted to be in a position um, to to um, advocate for some of those funds, um, as well as the fact that. Um, the city is doing this applied sciences um, school, and that Roosevelt Landing, I mean Roosevelt Landing, <laughs> Roosevelt Island is is uh, a potential or front runner for that school. The city has indicated, as per Jessica Lappin, when she had a press conference the other day, that the city of New York is is going to contribute a hundred million dollars worth of infrastructure improvement, which will go a long way here on Roosevelt Island. The seawall, ferry landing. Um, roadways and so on. Um, and it's going to be needed if we're going to support an institution or facility of that size yeah, here on the island. Yeah, the ramp. Exactly, it's the ramp. Damage. Exactly. So, again, it's the purpose of the study, and we want to move forward with next steps, um, is to put ourselves in a position that when the money is available or if, or if the school is announced and that Roosevelt Island is selected, we want to be in a position Although, that we can get the ground running. be able to remove the demolition materials from the hospital and to bring in their construction materials. It would be really nice if they had a dock. Yeah, Rather than damage our whole road and our, and our ramp and everything else, they could barge us up in and out. That, that would be mm -hmm. a, mm -hmm. a good proviso. I would rather not have, you know, tons and tons of uh, demolition trucks carrying stuff up and down Main Street, up and down a ramp, and then bringing in all the materials to build the school. Absolutely. We've done it here with the development of Southtown, and as well as um, the regular the supply runs to the power plant. I suppose that dock that right. just can't be done. And, and some of the, uh, the tram equipment came yeah. via the dock as well. 
uh, but at this present time, as, as indicated by the, the study, we can't use it for, for that purpose anymore, otherwise we risk the, the um, Right, um, but it would be a drop in the, in the cost of constructing a school, would be a drop in the bucket oh. to rebuild the Oh, the, absolutely. The right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You absolutely. But again, it's to put ourselves in a position that we can be shovel, shovel ready for exactly. receiving money. Shovel ready, absolutely. <laughs> you know, putting the uh, dock there makes more and more sense the more you think about uh, future development in that area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It becomes part of what we offer. Great. Excellent. Absolutely. And just sort of wrapping up the, the two options here. Um, I, uh, Matt, it jumped over to um, the slide that says similar design, unless you want to talk about some other stuff. <laughs> I just wanted to sort of close out, uh, you know, our, our opinion of probable cost for option one was uh, 5.2 million. This is the, the basic option uh, with the minimal up, uh, upland upgrade. And this $5.2 million does include a soft cost for engineering, permitting design, uh, and construction administration support. Um, so that was 5.2 million, and then for option two, it was 7.5 million. And again, it includes the, the engineering and the construction administration. For, for, um, for me, I would advocate for something um, like option two that would have a multiple use facility, not just a ferry landing, because the ferry service may run every 15, 20 minutes, maybe every hour, depending on, on the need. But we've spoken to, the, uh, I think, the Metropolitan Waterfront Alliance, and they've indicated um, a need to have recreational facilities there for um, launches for kayaks. Um, the New York Rowing Association has expressed an interest in terms of having a crew a facility here as well. So we want to have a multiple use facility, which is why option two, even though it's pricier, but you get more bang out of your buck. We have to take um, a look at this small park and so on, as you can see from yeah. the um, drawing in the, in the handout. Aside from the potential uses, the fact that the deck cannot be structurally certified as being sound. Mm -hmm. okay, if by option one, their plan was to have demolition materials in there anyway to take out a section right. of, the, of the deck. Mm -hmm and then put in uh, a metal gang right. gangway. Right. Mm -hmm. So if, if we're in a position where we're demolishing a section of the deck anyway, yeah, might as well do the whole if thing. we just take out the whole deck, then the right. question, you know, at least that at least we'd have that structurally unsound component gone. Exactly. Yeah. Now the challenge then becomes whether we feel it's necessary to, to rebuild with a new deck and, and other, you know, launch facilities or stuff like that mm -hmm. associated with that. But taking, but as long as we have all the construction equipment or, or demolition right. equipment in place, and the bar or whatever barge or trucks are necessary to haul that material out, and the permits and absolutely removing removing a structurally unsound deck that's going to only continue to degrade probably makes sense. Right, which is it leads us to option two. Yeah, let's figure right. out how that breaks down though. What, you know, right. to what extent we could, if if we have seven point five million, one, how much? Yeah, this get? is something that uh, wouldn't be fully funded by REAC, but. I know Kellner's office yeah. is very supportive of this project there, as well. I mean, there is some, some city money already sort of set aside for this. Um, and again, we're looking at exploring options and you know, trying to 